First of all, we will learn the diagnostic catheters and the guide wires, types of the aortic arch, mm -hmm. guides, guide to the cannulate the major vessels and the variations and the references. So before starting the uh, cannulation of the difficult arch or the uh, tortuous anatomy, we will uh, see first the uh, how the tools are, what, what are the tools for the cannulating. So first of all, we will learn about the diagnostic catheters. Actually, when I started the uh, doing the paintings and I went there, so I asked for the pencils. So they are like, hey, so many pencils are there. So I was confused. So are there so many pencils and the similar in the catheters only? So many diagnostic catheters are there. So I was not knowing about the uh, various types of catheters and the uses of the catheter. So we will start with the diagnostic catheters first. So the two types of uh, catheters are there. We can divide basically in the simple as well as the complex one. So here we can see on the left hand side, Simple catheters have the one or the two curves. And here on the right side, there are the complex curves, complex curve catheters. So there are various curves are there. And uh, we will learn about the uh, uses of that different type of catheter. So here we can see the how the catheters are selected. So first of all, A is here, T plant. So Increased length provides a more stability. So in the complex catheters, there are there is more tip length is available compared to the simple catheters. The B is here. B is primary curve. It is basically based on the angle of the target artery from the parent vessel. C is secondary curve based on the width of the parent vessel because this, this part basically remains in the uh, parent artery when we are cannulating. Then uh, this D is tertiary curve. That, that is basically based on the curvature of the length vessel and the E is length. So uh, when we are using the diagnostic catheters for the aortic arch or the major vessels, most of the times we use the 100 centimeter of the uh, diagnostic catheters. So since uh, straight catheters as well as the curve catheters. Straight, straight catheter, uh, catheters most commonly used are the head under JR4, Pustin, or the word catheter. And they are good for the type 1 arch and not for the not, uh, not for the variant anatomies. The curved catheters are like C1, C1, 2, 3, VTK type of catheters are used for the type 2 and the 3 aortic arches and the various ana variant anatomies. We will learn later on about the type 1, 2, and 3 arches. So to summarize here, this is head under Siemens, VTK, and the JR catheters. So they had written cannulation success, success rate is like 50 to 70% in the head under. But I think in the practical scenario, it is much more than the uh, this 50-70%. And the Siemens is 90%. And the VTK is 70 to 90 percent, and the just kid, uh, JR is only 50 percent. The head enter and the JR are the simple catheters, so they are used for the type 1 aortic arch cannulation. Uh, uh, whereas uh, Siemens and the VTK are the uh, complex curved catheters, so they are used for the difficult arches. And the risk of embolism is very minimal in case of the head under, which is routinely used. And which is, uh, this is Siemens is a very high risk of the embolism. And the after uh, advance, after cannulation, the advan uh, advancement is very difficult in case of the Siemens, whereas uh, it is very easy in case of the uh, head under. And the pro chances of prolapse into the arch after advan advancement is minimal in case of the head enter and difficult in case of the Siemens catheter. And the amount of the expertise is needed is very less in case of the head enter. So uh, first of all, we have to learn about uh, with this simple catheter and after that we can go towards the complex catheters. Then we will learn about the guide wires. So commonly used guide wire is uh, terumo wire. 
it's usually 150, 150 centimeter long and it's 035 and the tip is angled and they, these are the stiff catheters or stiff wires so uh, amplas cath catheter uh, amplas guide wires are there so uh, in that category extra stiff the one is i had not shown here is the uh, ultra stiff and this is the super stiff and that are available in uh, uh, normal length as well as the double exchange uh, guide double exchange guide wire and this one is the lunderquist wire that is also uh, stiff wire and here we can see the tip is little bit different than the usual one. So before starting uh, the aortic arch uh, uh, cannulation, difficult, uh, aortic arch cannulation as well as the major uh, vessel cannulation, first of all, if we know the uh, basic things via the CT angiography or the MR angiography, then it is uh, easier to cannulate the vessels. So, if the good quality MR NGO is available, then we can see here, this is the innominate artery, this is the left CCA, and this left subclavian artery. So, and it's looking like type 1 arch. So, when we are cannulating, then we know where we are going. So, we uh, need to know about the tortuosity variants and the abnormalities beforehand, if it is available. So, here we can see, it's very tortuous type of uh, aortic arch is there and the uh, these vessels are very uh, looking very tortuous. So uh, we have to be careful about, careful not to cause the dissection. Here we can see the left CC is directly arising from the this uh, innominate artery. And the, here the uh, stenosis is there at the left CCA. And this is this was even patient Actually, left CCA was very not was not clear, but after DSA, we took the uh, run from here only. Then we came to know that left CCA and ECA was having the uh, too much uh, the clots were there. So, if we know beforehand, then we can be careful about the complications related to the uh, procedure. So, when the good uh, aortic arch uh, photograph that, that imaging is not available, then we can do the aortic arch angiogram. So it's usually done with the pigtail catheter. So it's like pigtail. Then the power injector is put for the uh, this aortic arch, aortic arch angiogram. And catheter hub, a uh, catheter hub or the short connector tubing is there for the connecting to the, uh, co that, that is connected with the power injector to the, uh, this diagnostic catheter and it should be pressure resistance, otherwise it will burst. And the pressure is ar around 700 to 800 PSI, and they, it's about the 16 ml per second, and total volume injected is 20 to 24 ml. And then uh, what are the views to see for the aortic arch? So here we can see 30 to 40 degree uh, angle uh, LAO is very good for the seeing the major vessel origin. Here we can see it's a uh, right innominate, then the left CCA, left subclavian artery. But it's not clear from the right CCA to the right subclavian. So RAO 30 degrees is very useful uh, to differentiate between these two. So I had talked about the type 1, 2, and 3 aortic arches. So we'll see here regarding the different, this type of arches. So uh, in type 1 arch, all three great vessels are arising from the apex of the arch. Vertical distance from the origin of the innominate artery to the top of the arch is less than one diameter of the left CCA. Here we can see it's less than one uh, diameter of the left CCA and easiest arch to navigate and reflect the less difficulty in cannulation of the, any of the great vessels from the femoral axis. So here we can see, this is the diagnostic catheter and this is the guide wire. So when we are introducing this uh, diagnostic catheters and into the ascending aorta, then we will rotate it, uh, rotate it to the anti-clockwise and it will directly go to the innominate artery. This is type two aortic arch. And here the origin of the innominate artery 
origin of the innominate artery lies between the horizontal plane delineated by the apex of the inner curve this is the inner curve of the arch and this is the outer curve so this is in between and the distance is like 1 to 2 diameter of the cca and this is the type 3 and here we can see the all the uh, major vessels are arising from the ascending ascending aorta and here it is more than 2 diameter of the cca so this is the just the summary here all major vessels are arising from the apex it's in between and here the all vessels are arising from the ascending aorta so type 1 and 2 arch configurations can be routinely catheterized with the angled catheter and the reverse catheter is generally necessary to select the vessels arising from the type 3 arch so we'll see later on the what are the reverse type of uh, diagnostic catheters so in the uh, younger younger patients there are the uh, this straight vessels are there and not much tortuous, but the, as the age advances, the tortuosity increases. So there is difficulty in the cannulation. So when the simple arch, uh, simple arch cannulation we are doing. So first of all, we have to know about the uh, how to have the orientation regarding the uh, origin of the great vessels and. Uh, uh, which catheter to select the left CCA because the left CCA is most of the time is difficult and uh, we have to see, uh, see the left external also because sometimes we have to uh, go deep in with the guide wire into the CC, uh, ECA or the any other vessel. If it is stenose or something then chances of dissection is very high and Cannulation difficulties most of the time arises with the bovine arch. As we had discussed last time, the bovine arch is like key shared origin of the uh, innominate as well as the left CCA commonly. So the force when we are uh, cannulating uh, with the diagnostic catheter, the force tran transmitted to the force is basically transmitted to the ascending aorta. And here we can see some are difficult and then some are simple because the this curve is different in all type of bovine arch bovine arches it's uh, all bovine arches are not the same one so what are the uh, different methods are there to cannulate the uh, bovine arches so the uh, usually reverse type of diagnostic catheters are there so reverse type of catheters like same one or the same two or the categories of the same catheters when we are pushing the catheters it will go into the major vessel, the, uh, the ascending aorta or the, the parent vessel which is there and when we are pulling it will directly cannulate into the one of the major vessel. So it's a uh, pushing and pulling technique is there. So uh, here we can see when we are pushing the catheter. So the main thing is reformation of the seam catheter. So when we are pushing it will take the shape of the uh, arch. After that, the this seam is already formed, and when we remove the uh, wire, here we uh, the wire has been removed, and after that it had it has been re uh, rotated anti clockwise, so it will directly go into the uh, innominate artery. Then reconstitution in the left subclavian artery is also one way. So uh, diagnostic catheter the seam catheters are directly. Uh, introduced into the left CCA with the wire. After that, uh, it has been uh, again pushed till the uh, shape of the catheter is there. After that, uh, uh, when we push, uh, when we push, then uh, it will take the shape of the, sorry, we, when we pull, it will go directly into the one of the major vessels. So reconstitution of the seam artery can be done in the any way at the iliac artery, at the uh, subclavian artery or the ascending aorta. The reverse curve system is also there. So here the, uh, you know, the already it is into the, uh, this common origin. After that, it has been uh, like torqued anti-clockwise and it will take the reverse shape. And after that, when we pull it, then it will directly go into the uh, left CCA. So here is the, it is the same thing. And when we are 
cannulating via the radial root. So radial root is little uh, easier than the femoral one for the bovine arches. So the seam one directly, the seam directly go into the uh, ascending aorta. After that, when we pull it, then it will directly go into the CCA. Then just, uh, it's not just the cannulating the major vessels. Sometimes when we cannulate and introducing deeper into the vessels, distal vessels, then it will come back. So what are the different methods to prevent that? So coaxial sheath uh, placement, placement can be done. Here the cook, tarumo, arrow, cordis sheath are there. And the most important thing is that ki we have to take the length of 70 to 80 centimeter of the this long sheath because the when we take the uh, longer sheath than that, then it will directly cover the diagnostic catheter. So we have to take the uh, length of 70 to 80 centimeter only. So sometimes the uh, uh, when the uh, it's very difficult to cannulate deeper into the distal vessels then the anchoring into the ECA is very useful and the extra stiff wire as we had talked regarding the amplats wire that is very easier for the uh, guide guide uh, difficult easier for the uh, this one then this is like balloon guided anchoring technique actually I had not seen but I will ask the seniors uh, what is basically this so here they had written like the balloon is there to uh, give the support to the uh, wire on the diagnostic catheter so it can go deeper into the uh, vessel. So this is the guide positioning is easy. Uh, when the, uh, the wire is not supporting into the deeper vessel, so we can take the two wires to support the another wire. And the most important uh, complication related to this all uh, cannulation is atherosclerosis actually my first tsa i when i was torquing the diagnostic catheter i caused the uh, the same uh, atherosclerotic plug went away into the mca and uh, on table patient had the stroke and patient recovered afterward thrombic after thrombectomy completely but we have to be careful when we are doing this type of procedures so uh, excessive catheter manipulation should be avoided and the, the same type of catheters are very prone to have the uh, this type of complications and these are the references for my talk and thank you Thank, thank you, uh, Rizzi. You covered all the actual anatomy and the catheters that we use and how to use them very nicely. Has Rahul come? Dr. Rahul has come? Actually, sir, I was busy with one procedure. So, Anyway, I think you've done the job very well. And uh, what is important is not to push. If there is resistance, it means the catheter tip is hitting a wall and you can cause a dissection, especially if in the arch, it is if it is what we call a porcelain arch. In the porcelain arch, there is calcification in the wall of the aorta on the arch. And many times you can see this calcification even on plain x-rays, you can see the tubular calcification and uh, if you see that, you should be very careful and not work without a wire. So as soon as you enter the catheter, try and get the wire in and uh, the wire that we like to use for exchange or for going distally is not the terumo because the terumo is okay to enter but it doesn't give enough support for the catheter to climb. So once we've got the catheter in a certain distance, we switch to a Teflon wire. The Teflon wire has a wider tip. So it stays, uh, the wider tip is uh, safer and less cause, likely to cause dissection than a wire which is like that. So even 
so the dermo wire is supposed to be very delicate it can also cause dissection so one should so one first is think, don't work blind when you are advancing your wire the wire should be under vision the tip of the wire should be under vision if you use your teflon wire which is like a j like a j then you can go straight up don't do fluoroscopy all the way until you reach the arch then you do fluoroscopy but if you are using a terumo which is almost like a 45 degree then you must always do fluoroscopy from the groin up to the head neck and uh, at least we have found that to get into the left carotid the reverse uh, flick or the con counter clockwise rotation is better and to get into the innominate clockwise rotation is better so i think uh, that's what i would have to say in addition to what uh, riddhi has already said if any of you have any questions or comments please go ahead i see that everyone is muted nobody has any comments or any questions one more thing is when you are uh, looking at an unfolded aorta the ap view is not the best view you should go to lao 30 if you go to lao 30 very often the arch is opened out and you can see the left carotid origin better so remember you don't always have to work only in the ap and when we are taking an arch shoot you have to be very careful about the air you should be careful not to let air into the system because air is our enemy so when you are connecting the injector to the catheter hub you have to make sure that there is no air so you have to push from this side let blood come from this side so that the two fluids are in contact and uh, you have to make sure that it is properly locked if it is not properly locked it can go like a whip so i don't know how many of you using of you are using injectors because now i find more and more people are using the hand injection in, on the arch so if you want a proper good arch angiogram you need to use the injector with the hand you can never get enough enough uh, power to make a proper injection as as she mentioned the pressure should be 7 to 800 pounds per square inch and we have to inject about 16 ml per second so getting 16 ml per second is not uh, very easy with the hand injection unless you are something somebody very strong so we have kyur here kyur kyur panjali is a strong guy he can make the injection but i don't know how many others can uh any anybody else any comments no in that case we seem to have finished early today uh jayashankar do you want to take over no yes, sir yeah <laughs> well one more thing i can say is you should use the catheter you are familiar with most of us use the head hunter most of the people in india have worked with me so they have used the head hunter but those who have worked in chitra for instance they will use the jr4 because they are more familiar with the jr4 a lot of people use the vertebral catheter the v the vertebral catheter which has only one one right angle or the picard catheter which has a slightly longer tip so whichever catheter you are happy with that is the catheter you should use and once again i will say if you encounter resistance don't push just come back a little bit turn and it will go up don't push whether it is a wire whether it is a catheter if you encounter resistance come back just a little bit turn it will go up that is what you should do 
and if there is a dissection if you realize that you have caused a dissection wait for 10 minutes sometimes the dissection is in the direction of blood flow so if there is a tear in the intima blood goes between the intima and the media and it raises a flap so if you wait for a few minutes the flap may increase if the flap increases then it means that you have to deploy a stent if you don't do that the flap will increase and close the artery and such patients get problems not only from the reduction of the lumen but also from clot formation in the in the sub intimal part so remember that if you think you got a, so many times when we are for instance advancing a catheter into the cavernous ica the artery is tortuous and you think that you have caused an injection uh, uh, an injury what we do is complete the procedure and at the end as you are coming out again make an injection make sure that that flap which you have raised is not increasing if it is not increasing you don't need to worry but if it is increasing then you have to you have to do something about it and the easiest thing today is to deploy a stent so what is important is now riddhi said the first case that she did one uh, embolus went into the mca which means she had to do a thrombectomy so even though it is a diagnostic angiogram don't think that this is a routine procedure this is and you can get into trouble and even the most experienced person i have got into trouble uh, late in life so you can get into trouble at any stage so if you get into trouble you must have the wherewithal to get out of the trouble which means that for that mca if we did not have a then uh, retriever on board if you were to order it in in many places the said retriever is on, on the shelf it is there but if you don't have it and you have to order it you may have to wait for an hour or two or longer which means that you are allowing the brain to get that much injury so even if it is a diagnostic uh, procedure make sure that you have the tools so the tools that which, which are commonly required are the stent carotid stent or the balloon mounted stent and the stent retriever the non detachable stent so you should even for a diagnostic angiogram make sure that you have these two things and uh, you don't need to warn the patient beforehand but if you have this complication you have to you have to deal with it thank you for input sir okay thank you so if uh, there are no questions i think we can uh, close this session if there are no comments i see that there are uh, 18 attendees that's all okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir